Okay, then let's go to assignment number five. I've chosen the solution of one of the students. I'm not sure whether there are some miscalculations here or not, but let's go through it together. Let me also explain uh, what we need uh, in the midterm exam if we add such questions and how we can generally deal with the solution. So uh, here we asked about the elements inside the PSSM. When we talk about all elements, it means that we need all the cells inside these metrics, not a specific path that we ask in the second question. So we are dealing with DNA sequences. Uh, this is a profile. You remember when we have multiple sequences like this, then we can call them a profile. They are usually a gene family or, for example, a protein family, and we can discuss about it. And here, scores of aligning and also gap penalties and everything are described like this in general. And sometimes, if you remember, in some questions, we can uh, give you one by one. For example, say uh, the score of aligning A with C is this value. Aligning A with G is this value. It could be different. Sometimes to make our job easier, we can just say, for example, just matches, we give five, mismatches are one, and gap penalties are minus two. So please be careful about that. If we give you, for example, one table to show all scores related to aligning matches or mismatches or gap penalties, it is possible to. Now here, uh, the first thing we do, we find the table related to relative frequency of these nucleotides position-wise. It means that now we talk about the first position, then here we calculate the relative frequency of A. One over five cases I see A, so 20%, this is the relative frequency of A in the first position. I don't see any C. so. You see, this is a C. Uh, this is a zero as the relative frequency. Whenever you don't see it, then it is zero. So, as you know, relative frequency corresponds to probability. It's like to ask you what's the probability of receiving A in this uh, in this profile in the first position. This is 20% for A. For G, this is 80%. So, whenever we talk about relative frequency, we also mean probability. Now, for the second position, we can do the same. You see, in 60% of cases, you observe C nucleotide. In 40%, you see gaps. Unfortunately, this profile is given to us considering the gaps itself. We don't need to come up with it because the sequence itself is, for example, for the fifth one, it is GCATC, only five nucleotides inside it. But uh, we give uh, such gaps to you so that it will be easier for finding PSSM. We don't expect you to uh, construct it yourself. Now, this is the time to use this formula in order to find each cell in my metric. So you will have these metrics at the end. By the way, it's better not to put position here, although this, this line uh, shows that everything here is uh, partitioned, but we didn't name them here. So it's, uh, it's better not to mention anything in this cell. Otherwise, you should have a line here to say, okay, this, uh, this row is related to position. These ones are nucleotides, so you don't need to write anything here. The rest is uh, pretty much clear that these are the positions, these are the nucleotides. Okay, how to find each cell? We need to use the formula. So in your exam, don't forget to provide the formula. And for each one of them, assign the values or numbers one by one. And this is the good way to show it. Although parentheses doesn't mean this, these are indices, but it's okay to type it faster. Instead of uh, type them as indices, you can put them inside parentheses to say, okay, uh, SAA means that instead of I and J, I consider, for example, I and K here, I consider AA. 
Okay, let's uh, check here if uh, it's written correctly. I, J, we consider A1. This is true. It means that I'm looking for the first cell of my matrix here. So take a look at this one. I'm looking for A1. So this is the correct way to write it. Now I consider for the first one A1. It means that whenever inside the formula you see I and J, consider A and J instead of them. So what was I? We consider A, so this is A. And J, we consider 1, so this is 1. That's why assigning values are important so that in the midterm exam, we also check whether you did it correctly or not, and we expect you to provide us this part of the solution as well. And it, ma it makes your job easier anyway when you organize your uh, solution like this. So you won't have any miscalculation if you do that. And what is K here? This is important because uh, inside the table that you have here for relative frequency, you should consider all the possibilities that we have here. And for example, for the first position, why I'm talking about first position? Because we are fixing it for first position here, you see. So here I have only for A and G. And that's why K can take only A and G uh, possibilities here, OK? So, oh, sorry for this one, A and G. So you see, for K, for scoring, I have two score of alignments in the formula. We get the summation because of this K. So this summation is based on K. What are the possibilities? A and G. Because if we don't have any possibility here for them, this is zero, and that's why we don't consider them anyway. If you write it, there's no problem, but there are zero in their summation. So uh, the aligning S with AA and AG, how to find them? If I have a table for them, good. I can take a look at it and uh, give the answer. But sometimes, as I said, we uh, make your job easier and say, OK, if there are matches, then give it 5. If mismatches, give it 1. If there's a gap with the letter, give it minus 2. So here, A and A, they are the same. So this is 5. This is correct. If uh, there's a mismatch, then give it 1. This is correct. Now, uh, the corresponding probability to each one of them. For A, we have 20%. For G, we have 80%. How do I understand? I'm talking about these probabilities, not others. You see, we consider the first position here, uh, as you can see. For uh, P, we have J. What was J? This one. We are talking about the first position. And we should do it for the rest of the table. And of course, the calculation takes time. In the midterm, we have lots of calculation. So we should be careful not to have any miscalculation for all of that. This is your main challenge for the midterm exam. For the face-to-face -face, uh, classes, for midterm exam, we usually decrease the time for calculation. But uh, since we have a homework exam, this is one of the challenges to uh, be faster for calculating uh, your solution. So please practice it. Uh, don't be lazy about it, because if you practice it beforehand, you will be faster for the midterm exam, and it could be very helpful to finish your uh, midterm exam much sooner than the deadline and you don't need to be awake during the night before the deadline. Okay, so assume that we come up with the whole table after all this calculation and then the second question we say compare it with the specific sequence. What I told you to do is to just highlight this path. It means that uh, we have A for the first position. OK, I find A on, the, on this matrix, and I highlight it. Okay. So if I want to check whether you highlighted it correctly, I just check A, G, G, C, C, T, A, C, C. A, G, G, C, C, T, 
A, C, C. This is correct. Okay, so uh, that's how we check it. And that's how you should show it uh, the path. So uh, this is pretty easy and obvious, right? But what kind of comparison is that just to highlight it? Because the thing is that uh, we need to have biological background in order to compare it properly. Like, for example, if I have AGG here, I look at this part, at this matrix, and I see one negative one for this one. And for 1 and 1 1.5, this is maybe big enough, maybe not. For example, comparing to 4.2, this is not big enough. But this is, for example, these two are at least positive numbers. This is negative. So maybe it's, uh, I, I should think, for example, if I change this nucleotide to another one, like ACG, what uh, would change in my protein sequence after that? Because if I consider AGG as a codon, this one would correspond to one uh, specific amino acid. And based on that, if I change, for example, AGG to ACG, what uh, would change in my protein? I mean, uh, is it, for example, going to change the function of my protein or not? It's okay. If the structure of the whole protein, the whole sequence will change if I uh, have a different amino acid here. So you see these things for comparison needs uh, biological background. For the time being, at least for your midterm, uh, the comparison is just good enough that you highlight this. I don't need any description or something extra. But later we will talk about protein structures and we will see uh, if we can also include it in the final to, for example, have a PSSM and uh, you can also describe more about the protein structure based on that, but we will see. For the midterm exam, this is just good enough. When we say compare PSSM with a specific sequence, either DNA or protein, it's just good enough to show us the path like this. And for uh, HMM profile, we will talk about the assignment on Wednesday because uh, that example is very important. We should practice it so that we will be ready for the midterm exam. So if you have any questions, guys, please let me know. Otherwise, I will see you on Wednesday.